I was recently divorced and and so already keen for a, a new chapter, new start to life. And as I said, I've done this course in Italian. And so it just sort of did this trip, fell in love with Milan, even though it was October, yes, end of September. So when we touched down at Linate, which was the international airport then, I mean, there was a swirling mist, um, your classic infamous Milan fog. And yet, even in that rather dismal setting, I just fell in love with this, this city and then subsequently country. So moved back, got, went back home and immediately sort of resigned from my job, sold my car, moved back in with my parents and waited six months while my work permit took ages to come through because Italy had just gone through what they called the Mani Pulite, which is the clean hands, which was this big anti-corruption sweep that they did. So all the envelopes under the table that one would usually pass to some you know, administrative bureaucrat to speed things up a bit. Of course, when my application went through, everyone was being uber clean about everything. And it took six months to finally get the go ahead. And when I arrived, I mean, I'd say for the first six months, I just went to sleep in tears every night, more for the stress of trying to communicate in a language I thought I understood before I left. Um, having done two semesters of Italian of uh, night school. But I may as well have landed in Athens, quite honestly. You couldn't follow a conversation. You had to focus on one person. Um, and very few people in Italy, even in Milan in those days, could speak English. I mean, now if you go, there's a far greater fluency in English. But 20 odd years ago, gosh, 28 years ago now, it wasn't the case. So my Italian improved very rapidly, but at great stress to myself because I didn't mix with any English speakers, even though in Milan there's quite a large English American expat community. So you can actually get by with mixing with solely English speakers if you go into the Milan, even then. But I chose not to, and I'm pleased I did. Um, and what were you hoping to sort of achieve? in Milan? I mean, I know you wanted to work and uh, seek a new adventure, but what would you were you hoping would be the sort of result of you emigrating? Um, maybe because I didn't emigrate. I initially just went over just for an adventure. So I suppose you could say something new, a new start, even if it was just a, a two year break. And it was the classic case of two years sort of merging into five years, becoming 10 years, and then suddenly found myself pregnant, and which changed the picture even more radically. But it was more as I became more um, Italianized, I suppose you could say, I just realized maybe this is where I'll end up living. Um, but funny enough, I never ever saw myself dying in Italy. I almost, I always somehow imagined myself dying back in South Africa. So Italy never became my country. Mm -hmm. um, so I had the passport and, you know, I loved, I loved my years in Italy. There's no denying it. And I'm writing a memoir on my years in Italy, but I, I somehow never became truly Italian and Italians, They'll, you'll always feel foreign. I mean, wherever you emigrate to, no matter how long you've been there, you will always be a foreigner. And that you, you can't, you know, you, 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 you'll never lose that identity. And so I think that was one of the reasons maybe subsequently for wanting to go back. My main reason for returning was because I wanted my son, who was about to enter the Italian primary elementary school system, he was about to turn six and I realized that either he entered the Italian school system and then that would be it. You know, that is where we would stay or we came back to South Africa then and um, 
he entered the South African schooling system. And to me, it was important that Liam acquire his South African heritage. He was obviously mother tongue Italian at the time. And I was the only person who spoke any, any English to him. I only spoke English to him. But he, I just, it was very important for me to come back. And at that time in my life also, I was missing family and I've become a bit more disillusioned, disillusioned with Italy. I was paying so many taxes. I mean, I always joked when I went to the bank to pay more taxes. I'm just going to put up a camper bed here because I was constantly in the queue to pay more taxes. And you just get a bit sick of it. I mean, I was in paying more than 50% by the time I left. And you don't really want to get up in the morning to work. when you're going to know half of it's going towards... Yeah. Um, Polit yeah. Politicians. Um, and Politicians, yes. And after 16 years, I mean, I assume you, you visited South Africa during the course of those 16 years. But when you, when you got back, did you notice... I mean, I'm not sure what year that my math is. So that would have been 2012. So it would have been post the big World Cup. Hoorah, rah, everyone loves South Africa. We are, you know, the babies of the nation, of the world or whatever. Um, you'd already started getting your load shedding. You'd had a few load shedding experiences. Um, and I came back, that would have been at the start of the, the Zuma years, um, 2012. Um, yeah, the three years. Mm. Yes, yeah, so already Zuma had had his hands in the pie. And coming to see that I'm from Durban originally. And so when I moved back to South Africa, the choice was do I go back to Durban, where my sister and my parents still lived, and cousins and uncle and aunt. So on a family level, it made more sense. But thank God, oh my word, I still every day say thank God. Thank heavens, I decided, no, Cape Town, because now, I mean, obviously you see what's happening to poor Durban. Um, and so maybe I didn't sense the decline as much because already, you know, Cape Town even then had a, had a quality difference that um, you could feel. And no, just, just loved it. Just, so... I've never regretted coming back. That's a question I get asked often. Never. Don't, not for not a minute. Mm -mm. Why not, though? Why not? Mm. Why, why, why wouldn't I return, you mean? Or why don't you regret it? I look around me, Roman, every morning, and from my front door, I've got a view of the Musenberg Mountain. And I step out and I look at that and I think, Okay, Ingrid, you're living in a little bubble. You go five minutes down the road, you can be in Lavender Hill and go and get whatever drug you want. But in this little bubble, I live in a way that I could never live anywhere else in the world. And I go for walks in Quirt Constantia every Sunday morning with my cousin, and we there again. Where could we do this anywhere else in the world? You know, take five minutes by car and we're in this... And also it's the age, you know, you're approaching 60 and you start thinking, I don't want to go through all of that again. The, the move and I moved with pets and um, I, I want to die in South Africa unless some, you know, unless they come burning my gate down, um, then, uh, okay, they may push me out. But yes, yes. the way I feel right now, uh, mm -mm. your heart yeah. is and if I'm asking, if I'm asking, you, you, you came back for your son, for your son to be educated in, in South Africa. Um, How is he finding the, the country? I mean, you get used to it, right? Sometimes Look, it's like you just accept it. They they do. Um, this is what they've grown up with. I mean, but already by the time we came to South Africa, it hasn't, especially in Cape Town, Liam won't have noticed much of a deterioration. Um, the load shedding, obviously, is the big one. But like so many who are able to, I, I mean, his father, who's Italian, is already pushing for him to go to an Italian university. And I, I'm leaving the choice up to him. But even if he goes to a South African university, 
certainly his future. He's got the passport. He, unless things change radically, I mean, let's see what happens in 2024. I hate putting all our eggs on one date, but um, it is going to be the watershed. And I think if there's a positive outcome in 2024, he should still go, but I will still at least feel a bit happier about bunkering in here, you know, and, and yeah. Yeah, well, it depends what, what, what is deemed to be a positive outcome. Like, uh, to me, like, sometimes I think maybe the ANC and the EFF should just get together and then, you know. And blow up the country completely. Well, I mean, they can't do too much. I mean, the Western Cape will be insulated from it, so I don't live there. Yeah. But for the rest of the country to just be like, okay, another day without power. Like, we're so used to it. So I don't think there will be any material difference other than just the normal gradual decline. And, and increasing civil society just looking after itself, you know, building its own, fixing its own, maintaining its own, and just increasingly becoming less state dependent. My only concern is the burgeoning numbers of people who are state dependent, mm -hmm. you know, on welfare and everything. And you can't just say, oh, well, I'm okay, Joe, you know, <laughs> you're going to have this enormous pressure of of unemployed people now who the government can't support anymore because they've crashed and that's my big worry is anarchy um yeah that's probably my only serious worry is yeah. if there's no more control and it's just a free for all well i mean the nice thing is that if you look at revolutions it's, it's not the point they said you to start or sustain them it's actually the middle class who do it in every in every revolution so That's unfortunately true. for them for the most part the poor and destitute have no real power to organize no, so, it's true. so i'm not saying it's good that people are poor or destitute not in the slightest but what i'm saying is the chances of real civil strife is, is really low because so many people are poor and destitute rather than no, that. It's true. i think one needs to remember that mm. exactly if there was a collapsing middle class then there's a problem, right? Then the trends are the other way around. But if there really is a, a, a burgeoning, for lack of a better word, underclass, they they atomize. They, they, they can't really have political change. They only have mm. at the middle class level. And I think in 2024, we'll see in time to come, but I think the middle class is going to abandon the ANC dramatically. Enough to take them out of power? I don't know. But those with, with real power are the ones that are going to be off grid and voting for someone else. So we'll have to no, see. That's true. No, I know it's 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 you you always want 2024 to be here now. You know, I don't want to sit waiting. Why do we have to live through 2023? You know, but um, but it's more no. interesting than living in Italy, I would suspect. Well, I mean, we changed. I mean, while I was there, oh god, no, we lived through Berlusconi. Heavens, I mean, he if I survived Berlusconi, I mean, he was there. He was prime minister for most of my my time in Italy, and if I could survive him, maybe I should look at anyone. But then I look at what Canada has and what New Zealand now has. Or no, New Zealand is actually yes. They've um, have they not gone? Yeah, she, the, the 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 witch is out, but the, her replacement. Yes, but the witch is out. Yes, that, that, that was the chap who couldn't define a woman. Hey, yes. yes. The, yeah. hmm. Oh God, you yeah, know. So that's what I'm saying. Maybe we're not in such a bad place after all, <laughs> because at least I can. Uh, we won't see our sort of. Our black leaders carrying on about <clears throat> men being <laughs> in dresses being, um, yes, um, equivalent to me, which God forbid they ever I do mean, that. They're, they're communists, but they're not woke, and that's actually a good thing. <laughs> I know, I can live with communists. You know, we've learned how to deal with communists. I'm still, I just lose it when I have to deal with some woke individual who oh i'm so and so it's always these men who are defending transgender women i keep saying you're not the ones who are having the problem you know you have no say in this matter go argue about the trans the women who want to call themselves men that's your cross to die on not not this one so yeah, yeah. Mm. but thankfully in south africa we still know what a woman is we still know what a man is and for now exactly. it's already that's the reason why it's a better place to live in than most of the Western world, where they can't have no, categories. Absolutely. If you don't have categories, you die as a nation, mm -hmm. society. So that's not going to happen here. But Ingrid, 
thank you for yeah. your time. I really no, it was, so, it was such fun. Yes, and so when are you going to sort of put your thingy together and um, do your 